Hello darlings, this is Sewing Julie and welcome to my channel where we talk everything sewing. So today I have a topic on how to save money when sewing. We all know that sewing is a hobby that can get expensive very fast, so I have collected a 16 tip guide on how you can save money when sewing and enjoy your hobby without breaking the bank. I've started sewing in 2008, so right in the middle of the economic crisis and I also also was a student so I didn't have money and my whole sewing budget for entire year was less than $60 and that is correct that was my budget for the entire year and this is how I sewed for the first few years but yeah my passion and my interest for sewing was bigger than my wallet so I learned how to enjoy my hobby how to get better without spending a lot of money on it and even now when I work when I have more money that I can set aside for my hobby, I still apply a lot of these tips that I will tell you here today. I truly believe that hobby and sewing in particular is a very joyful activity that brings us relaxation, joy, and it's very good for mental health. So if your budget is tight, I still want you to sew. I still want you to find that time for yourself to enjoy your hobby, to have the moment to yourself and without having to worry about the money because I truly believe that it is very very good for your mental health. So I have prepared 16 tips for you. The, some of them will be a bit broader, a bit more general, and some of them will be very specific and very niche. I broke down all of these tips into three categories. So I will talk about how you can save on tools, how you can save on fabrics and notions, and how you can save on patterns. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also leave a comment. What is your best sewing saving tip? Okay, so without any further ado, let's start our video. So the first segment that we will talk is how you can save money on tools. And my number one tip is stick to the essentials. So I am a person who loves playing with different sewing tools. I love exploring, I love seeing how they work. However, I know very well that to actually sew, to get really good results, you only need five things. That is sewing machine that can do a straight stitch, pair of scissors, preferably one to cut paper and one to cut fabric, a hand needle, iron and measuring tape. Yes, this is only five tools that are non-negotiable must-haves, but having these five tools you will be able to achieve professional looking results. As a person who loves sewing knits, I would also add a serger to this list, but I know that not everyone sews knits and there are so many any other seam finishes that you can do using only straight stitch and achieve very good looking professional results. So if you're currently working with a very minimal setup but you have these five essential tools, this is all you need and you don't have to get any more additional tools. My second tip on how you can save on tools is use what you currently have. So for example, you currently have a standard iron, but I always say that steam iron is better. However, steam iron is also pricey. So here's a trick that you can do very very cheaply. You take a very thin cloth like cheesecloth, uh, you put it in water, you know squeeze excess water out so that the cloth is only damp but is not leaking water, right? Put it on the garment and just simply glide with the standard iron until the cloth is dry and you get precise neat results with a standard iron just as you would with the steam iron. Yes, this is a bit more work, this is a bit more steps, right? But the results are the same and you don't have to buy a pricey steam iron. I used this method for 10 years or something like that and it definitely works. Another example how you can squeeze the maximum out of everything that you have right now is for example that you have a very basic sewing machine but you would like to get a serger to neaten the raw edges of the fabric. No need for that if you have a standard 
favorite sewing machine there are plenty of very neat seam finishes that you can do with a straight seam only like French seam Hong Kong seam and etc etc and these are usually way more professional looking seam finishes that look very very good and last a long time so use what you currently have before buying a new tool so my third tip on how you can save on tools is a hardware stores instead of craft stores yes I know this is a bit of a weird suggestion but very often in hardware stores or in do-it-yourself stores you can find various tools and items much cheaper than you would find in craft stores plus they usually are a bit more heavy duty for example you can buy storage boxes I personally buy the construction paper in the hardware store that I use for pattern making and it's extremely cheap but it's very very durable and I buy like one roll for three five dollars and it lasts me like a year for pattern making the fourth tip on how you can save money on tools is very broad but you will be able to apply this tip on multiple occasions is don't compare your setup with someone else's so back when I started sewing like almost 15 years ago I would go on the internet and back then blogs were very popular and I saw people who had these huge craft rooms filled with various tools items fabrics and I thought wow this is what I need to sew at a good high level however now that I have experience in sewing I actually know that only a minimal setup is enough for you to achieve professional results and everything else you can get if you like if you want speedier result maybe more efficient result then you can upgrade but basically the very minimal minimal setup is okay so whenever you see photos on Instagram or I don't know you watch a YouTube video where a person shows his or her craft room always remember that it's their choice and it's not necessarily for you so don't feel bad if your setup is minimal minimum setup is great okay so now that I told you how you can save on tools let's talk how you can save on fabrics and notions the first step is very simple save those scraps uh, last year I made my husband a t-shirt using this fabric and I got a leftover which is like maybe 50 centimeters of the fabric that I didn't know what to do because I couldn't make anything for myself but once my baby was born and he grew a little bit I was able to make him a pajamas using those scraps and my baby and his dad had a very cute matching set so whenever you have any fabric leftover save those scraps because you can make either clothes you can add it into quilt you can make some accessory or add into some kind of creation that you are making the second tip on how you can save on fabric and notions is to repurpose old or thrifted garments so fun fact 13 years ago I was really into bag making and I even had a blog called bags you can make and I very often would go to the thrift stores and would look for big oversized uh, leather jackets that I could repurpose and use that leather to create the bag so I will add a few examples of the bags that I made using thrifted materials and they were literally like one jacket would cost like one euro because it was you know not the stylish bag but I was buying it simply for the material so my third tip on how to save money on fabrics and notions is a bit controversial because I know that not everyone will agree with me but this is my opinion that cheap fabrics are okay I don't mind natural fibers like for example merino wool is very beautiful very luxurious fabric but it's very pricey and even if you want to make a simple sweater out of it the fabric alone can cost like $80 or something like that which is not the budget that I'm comfortable working with so instead I usually work with fabrics that have some synthetics in it therefore they're 
cheaper but they also wear beautifully they last very long and they are great at washing and drying in the dryer machine uh, for example I typically buy my knit fabrics for around nine ten dollars for a meter however sometimes I get discounted ones that are like four or five euros or dollars so that is a very good price and you can make a garment literally under 10 euros dollars or less so my fourth tip is a homework for you you need to find a fabric store that is reliable but affordable for example in my city we have like probably eight bigger uh, fabric stores but three of them are very very high priced I mean the fabrics there cost like from 30 40 dollars per one meter but the rest of the stores have really cheap options starting from three dollars and up so back when I was student like 15 years ago and I was selling I found this shop somewhere in the basement it was quite well hidden but it had like good very very cheap fabrics they were not maybe the most beautiful fabrics you've ever seen but there were some great choices for solid colored fabrics that were very cheap and I made so many items within my budget you buying just from that store nowadays it's a bit easier you can find those stores online so do your homework and spend some time finding a reliable and affordable fabric store so my next tip is how you can save money on serger threads so here is my trick whenever I need to sew with a very weird color for example this neon greenish yellowish color that I needed for some project I knew that I would not use a lot of those threads in the future because this is not the color that I always work right so instead of buying four serger threads I bought one cone and for the rest of the three cones I just simply took this one and rolled my spare bobbins and threaded my serger with three bobbins and one cone I usually buy four threads of cones for some colors that I know I will always be able to use like white black red brown which is colors that I very often sew so for those yeah I always buy four cones but if I'm working with very specific thread I will just buy I want cone okay so the sixth tip on how you can save on fabrics and notions is buy fabric only when you have a project in mind so whenever you're going to the fabric store just for browsing just to look around right you're in a mood so you might pick up a few fabrics that look beautiful gorgeous and they are but you don't have a project for it and they end up just being there in the closet in the fabric stash and that is just money waiting around so here's the tip if you want to buy a fabric you always have to have a project in mind that you will use it for and usually it helps save you from lots of unnecessary purchases and therefore your wallet is much happier and the seventh tip on how you can save on fabrics and notions is take out the remnant notions from the garments that you're throwing out for example if you're throwing away a jacket that has a metal zipper take that zipper zipper out because those zippers are really pricey and if the zipper is in good condition you will be able to use it later on same applies to the buttons and other notions okay now we're moving on to our third and final segment is which is how you can save money on patterns so this will be weird coming out from the person who recently started creating her digital pattern line but I'm speaking from my heart I'm speaking from consumer side who loves to sew within a budget so here are my tips on how you save money on patterns so number one learn pattern making I have told this many many times and I will tell it more in the future pattern making is a great great skill that you can use to improve your sewing but also it will save you money because there will be no need for you to buy every single pattern for every single garment
garment that you make, you will be able to create your own simple garments using the skills that you learn. Nowadays, the internet is filled with great tutorials on how you can start pattern making. I also have a few pattern tutorials right here on my channel. I do recommend to start on the basic dartless block. I will link it down below if you want to check out that video. Trust me, your song skills will thank you, your fitting skills will thank you, and your wallet will thank you as well. Number two on how you can save on patterns is pattern magazines are way cheaper than buying individual patterns. For example, you know that I sew a lot from Burda, so when you're buying Burda you're spending like $8, something like that, but you're getting 30 patterns in one single magazine. And that is a great price ratio per design. And don't feel the need to buy every single Burda magazine, for example. Simply buy those that you find the patterns that you really like and you know you will be able to use those patterns. Before I started doing Burda reviews here on the channel I would just buy like maybe one or two patterns a year when I find a very interesting design that I want to make. That's it, that's very cheap but you get a lot a lot of patterns and the great thing is that they usually never go out of style so throughout the years you have a very good decent pattern collection within a great budget. Number three on how you can save on patterns. This is actually not something a lot of people know and I am not speaking for all the countries, but I do know that this is a thing in some countries around the world, definitely here in Lithuania. There are sewing patterns in the libraries that you can use. So I do encourage you to do your research, to check your libraries and to see if they carry sewing pattern magazines. I know that, for example, there are several libraries here in our country that do carry burda and you can take that burda and trace it and return without spending a lot of money. Fourth tip is again controversial and probably not everyone will agree with me but pattern sales is not necessarily a friend. Don't get me wrong I love a good deal I love a discount like every other person but whenever you see a very big discount and if you're buying things because it is discounted you might end up having lots of different patterns but not using them. Let's just say you buy 10 patterns for one dollar each but you don't know when you will use it and you just simply stash it, forget about it. That's ten dollars sitting but instead you could like take five dollars and buy one good pattern from I don't know independent designer that you really love the pattern and you will be able to use it instantly and maybe you will be able to use it over over again those five dollars for one pattern will be serving you much better than those ten patterns for dollar each. So I'm not saying not enjoy pattern sales, I'm just telling you it's not necessarily a friend and be cautious and whenever you're going into sale keep in mind what you want to buy, set the limit what you want to spend and look for the items that you will definitely be able to use. And my final tip for the day is secondhand sewing books and pattern magazines. Nowadays with the internet we are able to find used sewing books and magazines for very very cheap everywhere anywhere in your country so really I encourage you to do research to find those items on your maybe Facebook marketplace or eBay so I don't know when whatever is more popular in your country and to really find those secondhand items which are usually very very cheap but they're gold mines so here are all the tips that I wanted to tell you today on how you can save money when sewing. For my closing argument, I want to tell you this. When you're sewing within the budget, with a set budget, that is an opportunity. That is an opportunity for you to get creative, to improve your skills and to be better at sewing. So use that opportunity wisely, get creative, get better at sewing and you will find so much joy no matter how much money you are spending on sewing. Thank you for watching today's video and I will see you next time. Bye!